Hi everyone, Team Scorpio here. We are back with another Starfield ship build. This is the Valkyrie. This is a lightweight fighter that is designed for one thing, speed. The Valkyrie has a cruising speed of 197 and a top boosted speed of a staggering 790, all while maintaining 100% mobility. To do this, we did have to sacrifice some cargo space, but hey, you're not stuffing all of your luggage in a Lamborghini, are you? Now this is a Class C ship, so you'll need your piloting at rank 4. And since we are using some higher end parts, make sure you are at least level 60 and above to have access to all of them. Also, to get the most speed out of this ship, make sure your engine system skill is rank 3 or higher. With all that in mind, let's start the build. We are starting off at our usual starting point, New Atlantis. The reason is we need a ship to modify, and New Atlantis has the perfect one. If you have a spare ship to build off of, you can skip this step. Talk to the ship services tech and see what he has for sale. We are going to pick up the Rambler. This is a low value ship that is a perfect start to any build. It's a simple design that lets us add parts without too much hassle. Let's grab that and head to our next destination. So our next stop is in Neon. For that, we're gonna pan out a little bit. And we're gonna head over to the Vol 2 system. The planet we're looking for is Vol 2 Alpha. And we're gonna land on Neon. But don't land in the city on Neon Core. We're going to the outskirts. Once we're on land, we're going to turn to the left and we're going to head over to the Ship Services Building. Talk to the guy behind the desk and say you want to view and modify your ships. We only need a few pieces from here. I'll put the list on the screen if you want to shop at your own pace. Okay, now that we have our pieces, let's review what we got. We have one Pinch 8Z reactor, one J52 Gamma Grav Drive, one 900T fuel tank, and four Stroud Eklund Aculander 11 landing gears. The next task is to fit these to your ship. You can do this any way you can, as long as the ship is flyable. If you want to follow along, here's what I did. I started with removing the cowling and the weapons from the side of the ship, along with the cowling in the back. I then removed the existing fuel tank, the grav drive, the reactor, and the landing gear. Now let's move this engine off to the side, as we'll need it for now. I then started removing the cowlings on the other side of the ship, and the shield generator. We might as well remove the missile launcher here as well. Next, let's put the pieces back on. I'm starting with the fuel tank. As you see, the landing bay is blocking it. So let's move that out of the way. Now we can fit our fuel tank, our grav drive, and our reactor. Now take that engine, and let's put it on top of the grav drive. Now we have to move our existing landing gear back and remove the braking engine in order to make room for our landing bay. Flip the bay so it's facing forward and put it back under the cockpit. Now we can take our four landing gears and attach them to the ship. 
I put them on the back where there's plenty of spots to attach them there. Once that is done, we see our ship is flyable and there are no errors. Exit the builder, and we're off to our next destination. Before we leave, can we just stop and admire the monstrosity that we have created so far? It is kind of ugly, but in a good way. Okay, now we're off to our next and final destination. It's in the Soul System. We're heading to the Demos Shipyard. Once you have docked with the shipyard, head down the hall and take a slight left then around the corner and down the stairs. Speak to Nico Henderson. Select the option to view and modify your ship Let's finish modding our Rambler. The rest of the shopping will be done here. It's not a big list, but there are still a few parts to pick up. I'll put the list on screen. Pause the video now if you want to take note of these items. Got the list? All right, let's go shopping. We're starting with our bridge. For that, we want the Demos Ares DS 40.2. This amazing bridge is perfect for this build and it gives us eight crew stations on one module. Next, we need our landing bay. There's only one to choose from, so let's grab that one. Now we're gonna grab our one and only hab for the ship. We're going with a two by one. And for that, we want to choose the control station. The reason we're going to use this specific hab is it gets us more crew stations. The more crew we have, the more we can pump up those stats on the ship. Next, let's get some structures. First, we're getting two Demos Hull A's. Then we're going to need two cowling fours. Next, we need four Demos wing A's. Then let's grab four of the wing E's. Next, we need two Demos braking engines. And then last, let's get two Horizon weapon mounts. Now that should be it for structures. For a ship docker, we're going with the 100 PD slim docker, just to keep the bulk down. For a shield, I'm gonna go with the Vanguard Bulwark Shield. Now you may not have access to this one if you have not completed the SysDef mission campaign inside with the UC. If you did not have this option, the Assurance SG-1800 would be a good option here as well. Now, last thing we need are our engines. You may think that the best bet would be to throw some huge Class C engines on this one 
with the max thrust. But that's not what we're gonna do here. Instead, we're going with the Class A White Door 3015s. These are the fastest engines in the game. And on a lightweight ship, they easily outclass any other engine. We are getting four of these for our ship. Now that's it, we have all our parts. Let's pull all the other parts we purchased in Neon off our ship. We have the four landing gears. Our fuel tank. The grav drive. And finally, the reactor. Now just delete the rest of the parts as we're not going to need anything else from that ship. Now that we have all our parts organized, here's our layout. I will leave this on screen so you can match up with what you have. Okay, now that you're ready, let's build our ship. We always start with the bridge. Let's move that down to our open space. Next, grab the control station and attach it to the hook point on the bridge. Next, let's take our landing bay and attach it. This should go on the first hook point at the bottom of the control station. So the bay is half on the hab and half on the bridge. Now let's take our docker and mount it. It's not gonna go on the top of the ship. Instead, we're gonna flip it and place it just behind the docking bay on the hat. So now we have our landing bay going into our hab, and from there, you can access the bridge or access the docker. It's a simple setup, but it's all that we need for this build. Next, we're gonna add our drive chain components. First, we're gonna attach our reactor to the back of the hab. Make sure the top of the reactor is flush with the top of the hab. Now, take your grav drive and put it on one side of the reactor. It doesn't matter which side. Now take your fuel tank and put it on the other side. Now that the power components are added, let's attach the engines. You can take your engines and attach two to the back of the grav drive and two to the back of the fuel tank. Now that the drive section is complete, let's give the ship a little shape. Take the hull A modules and attach one to the top hook point on the front of the fuel tank and the other to the top hook point on the front of the grav drive. Next, take the cowlings and attach them to the front of the hull modules. Next, we're gonna add our landing gears. They should be attached so the small edge faces into the ship. We'll place one below the hull module and the other below the cowling module in front of the other landing gear. Repeat the process on the other side, making sure the small edge is facing into the ship. Now let's take the Demos braking engines and attach them to the front of the landing gears on each side.
This will give the ship that engine intake look. Now we are going to take the wing A modules. And those are going to go on the top set of hook points on either side of the ship. You want to make sure that the wing is mounted back slightly so that the wing is covering the drive and the engine. We're going to need that front hook point for later. Now let's mount the wing E modules. We're going to take the first one, flip it, and then mount it on the back landing gear. Now we're going to take our second wing, flip it, and then select the next variant, and then mount it. You'll notice that the larger parts of each piece will match up. Now let's do the same for the other side, mirroring what we did. Next, let's mount the shield generator. This is going to go on the top of the HAB module. I'm going to put it on the rear hook point. Now let's mount those last set of wings. We're going to use a glitch trick to mount them and blend them into the wing ease. Take the wing, flip it. Now attach the rear hook point of the wing to the lower hook point of the fuel tank. You'll see the piece turn red, indicating it cannot be mounted there. While holding your left mouse button, hit the Z key to flip the piece, then hit Z to flip again. Now release your mouse button and hit Escape. This will blend the two pieces together. If we zoom in, we can see how nicely they flow together. Now repeat the process on the other side. The last thing we need to do is attach our weapon mounts. These go on the last hook points available on the side of the hull modules. Now the ship is almost complete. You can see we have a base top speed of 180, 100% mobility, and a nice low mass of only 887. Now let's talk weapons. What weapons you're going to want on the ship will depend on the role you're envisioning for the Valkyrie. For example, if you're building this to take on fleets of ships, I'd probably use two sets of auto turrets, like the PBO 300 Auto Alpha turret and the Reza 300 Pulse Laser turret. This would allow you to focus on flying rather than aiming. But for my ship, I'm going to make this focus on disabling enemy ships, and for that, we're going to need to be able to take down shields fast and disable their systems quickly. For that, we're going to use my favorites, the PV-175 Helion Beam Cannons. These have a slower rate of fire than their counterparts, the PBOs, but they have more damage. This lets us control our shots a little better and take down those shields fast. We're going to need four of them. Next, we're going to need to pair those with an EM weapon. For those, I'm picking the Nullifier 1750 Suppressors. These offer an average electromagnetic damage of 48, but have an insane fire rate of 1.5. This lets us disable any ship systems quickly and effectively. We're going to need four of those as well.
Now as to where to mount them, that's your preference. But what I do is mount the PB-175s to the weapon mounts. One on top, and one on bottom. This keeps them nice and tight to the body of the ship. The EM weapons I mount on the top of the wings in the back. This gives them a clear shot towards my target. And that is it, we are done adding parts. Some of you may wonder why I don't add a third weapon option to my ship. I do this so I can maintain max power to the shields and engines and both weapon systems when fighting. Having a third weapon, I would have to draw power from another system. We still have a few things left to do before we are done. So first let's assign our weapons. I put my PB-175s on my W0 spot. This puts them on my left mouse button trigger. I put the nullifiers on the W1 spot, making them my right mouse button trigger. While we are here, we might as well rename the ship. Lastly, you know we can't just leave the color stock. Let's spice it up a little by double clicking on a piece to highlight the whole ship, then press J to access the color menu. I'm gonna go with a darker black motif here with a splash of red on the front. Color the ship though however fits your theme. And that's it, we're done. Let's head out and look at our ship. Here's a good look at the Valkyrie. She is a sleek ship that just looks fast. She's very much no frills kind of ship. She has everything you need without any extra baggage. The interior layout is simple. You have a front landing bay for easy access, and that leads right into the single hab control station. At the back of the control station is your ship to ship docker. Walk to the front, and you're on your bridge. Our nav table is in the middle, with plenty of seating around. There are these side sections with jump seats, and our small cargo hold. And that's the whole ship. Small and simple. And that's it for our build video. Thank you for sticking to the end. If you enjoyed this Starship build, please hit like and subscribe to the channel. And click the bell icon to be notified when I put up more Starship builds. I'm Team Scorpio and I'll see you in the next video.